They say change is as good as a rest. It's not true. A rest is a rest. But change does help shake things up a bit. Whenever I get bored in the kitchen, I just nudge French food into the realm of the exotique. I'm making a coconut lime flan, really a smooth creme caramel, but with island flavors, crushed chickpeas with green olives, and roasted cumin carrots, a touch of North Africa, pan-fried halibut with brown butter to go with those side dishes, and my friend Ivan's oysters with a soy mirin leek sauce for an Asian twist. Because sometimes, a little twist seems like a total transformation. remain distinctly French with their food, but they get inspiration from all over the world. I'm making a creme caramel, essentially, but with exotic touches, coconut and lime. And I have my atlas for inspiration. 350 oven. Now the first part is the caramel that spills all over the top. And for that, you need just plain sugar which you melt down until it's nice and dark. I like a whole cup. I think I'll just add a splash of water just to help get it going. I need a big kettle of hot water too because I'm going to make a water bath for this. Now that's taking its time. Just keep an eye on it because it can burn quickly. Now for the custard, lots of eggs. Six eggs. Now a little more sugar, half a cup. Now so far nothing has changed from regular creme caramel, but it's about to, because I have coconut milk. You can of course use regular milk. Some people use sweetened condensed milk and leave out the sugar, but I find that too sweet, sweet, sweet. Two cups. Now because the custard's sweet, I like it when the caramel's just a little on the dark side, because then it's a little more bitter, so you get bitter sweet. Bittersweet. Mm. So pour it right into a metal pan and swish it around. Now this liquid sugar in about five minutes will be hard as a rock, just like amber. Two limes. You can use lemons, you can use oranges if you like, but these are the most exotic to me anyway. Now. Once the caramel has set, I'm going to strain in the custard so it's perfectly smooth. A French touch. So you can see little bits of yolk and white in there. That's why I strain. For perfection. And now, the zest goes in. The reason I didn't do it before is obviously it would get strained out. And a little bit of toasted coconut, just half a cup. And then just take a spoon and swizzle it around so that it's evenly distributed. So I'll just bring the water over in a second because otherwise you've got too many things sloshing around. And then for the water bath, just pour in the hot water coming halfway up the sides of the pan. I just have to bake that until it just sets, but still a little jiggly. A little trip. 
My grandmother never traveled much, but she always had atlases in her house and she used to read them and make plans in her mind. A good atlas is like an adventure book because you suddenly see all the potential places you could end up in and you don't even know they exist, half of them. Use both hands because there's still water in there, remember, and it's hot. And then just leave it alone to chill and then you can turn it out. This is just personal taste. It can be eaten at room temperature too, but I like it a bit cold. So just run a knife around the edge. And then when you go doot, 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 it shifts around in there. Get a front row seat. And all the caramel spills out all over it. Yum. See that nice texture? Wobble, wobble. I love it. Mmm. Creme caramel, but with a tropical twist. I'm starting with dessert, but I am moving on to a main course. In fact, I'm moving on to side dishes. Carrots and cumin, and chickpeas with green olives. My favorite exotic food stand in Paris is Julienne's stand in the Marché Aligre. She's got lots of rums with preserved fruit inside. That's where I get a snack every time I go to the market. I love the bonbon, little biscuits with hot pepper, and plantain beignets, plantain bananas deep fried. Yum, yum. making all exotic flavors. It's kind of a way of traveling without leaving your kitchen. I'm making two side dishes now, carrots with cumin and then a chickpea thing that I really love. So I have cute baby carrots. Just chopping the ends off. The tips. These are kind of Moroccan flavors. You see this actually a lot in the south of France too. Cumin carrots is a classic combination. I always like to leave a bit of green because it's prettier that way. So, just spread the carrots out on the baking sheet. And cumin. I've got seeds. I'm going to crush them a bit, say, I don't know, two teaspoons. And what's nice about that is then you get a bit of the crunch from the seed and some powder sort of together, it's textural. Hot oven. I think I'll use a little fleur de sel. And pepper. And olive oil. Now look at that, just like a painting. I could hang it on the wall. I've got the oven at 400, which is nice and hot, so they'll get slightly caramelized too, which emphasizes the sweetness. Those won't take long, maybe 25 minutes, but if you have bigger carrots, leave them in longer, because you want them nice and soft with that nice brown edge. Now, my other side dish is chickpea oriented. These have been soaking overnight. When you soak them, they soften up and then they cook more quickly. To cook chickpeas, it doesn't take long. I like to add a few aromatic flavors to the pot. A humble onion. Just cutting it into quarters. And a bay leaf. And no salt, because it toughens legumes if you cook them in salt water. Add the salt later. I've just covered them with water. A 
now they cook. I want about half a cup of olives for these, so I'm just pitting them. And I just think I'll slice them. test really is if you can squish it. Book. Perfect. Because I'm making crushed chickpeas. Mm. Yum. And now to finish this, olive oil and just saute the garlic for a minute. Don't let it burn. And then spill the chickpeas right into the oil. And I take a potato masher and just crush them. Not to mash, so they're sort of half whole, like the cumin was in the carrots, was sort of half powder and half whole, and I like the same thing with these. And just heating them through again. And then my flavorings. Lots of green olives, some lemon zest. Let's add a little more olive oil. And a squirt of juice. Turn it off. Fleur de sel. Salting now at the end, and pepper, and finally some chopped fresh parsley. Now see how pretty? Looks fantastic. Oh! Beautiful smell. Transports you. See how they're all kind of wrinkled up a little bit, still with some green on there. But I'm making a very basic anchor to the plate to go with them. Fish with brown butter. I'm adding all exotic touches to French food today and I think the key is not to overdo it. I have cumin carrots, kind of Moroccan, and chickpeas with green olives and lemon. So, I'm sticking to purely French for my protein. This is a beautiful piece of halibut, and I'm going to fry it and serve it with brown butter, or beurre noisette, as they say in French. Now, I know I'm just making lunch for me. However, you never know how much butter you'll need. What could be a simpler sauce than melted butter? This should be sauce making 101. <laughs> Here's how it works. It melts down and foams, and then the foam sort of subsides, and when it starts to come up again, it's usually just where you want it in terms of nutty brownness. Okay, it's foaming like mad. Now I just have to watch to see when it reaches the right color. and it starts to smell richer, deeper and nuttier. It smells brown. And there's the second foam. That can sit there. Actually, I think I'll add a squeeze of lemon. Just some lemon to stop the browning and give it some acidity. Because the butter is going on as my sauce, I'm going to cook the fish in oil. Maybe just something neutral. This is
is just grapeseed oil and it has a really high smoking point so it won't burn like the butter. So salt and pepper. It takes about four minutes per side. I want it nice and golden on the edges and cooked through. Beautiful color. And I'll just finish it with a lid. This is just lunch for me, so nice little rubble heap of chickpeas. Now, for my instant sauce, brown butter, just golden, look. And little brown nutty tasting bits in it. And a garnish of these lovely roasted cumin carrots. Oh, yes siree. And just a little piece of green. Beautiful. I'm so good to myself. If I eat all this, I think I should just have a light snack tonight. I'm going to make oysters, my new favorite way of eating them. That's it. I'm going to Zanzibar or Rangoon. I can't decide. I've been putting all kinds of exotic touches on French food. I've stolen island flavors and North African flavors. And now for something a little Asiatic. Oysters with my friend Ivan's special sauce. It's my new favorite way of eating oysters. I had such a huge lunch. I just want a light snack tonight. Oysters. That's a great way to, when you don't really want to eat, just going out to an oyster bar, they're all over Paris. Glass of wine, oysters, slurp, slurp. My friend Ivan lives in Normandy and they have so many oysters there. He always makes oysters and he's a big guy and has no trouble opening them. I don't know what I was thinking tonight because I hate opening oysters. I'll make his sauce first. Actually, what piece do I want? This little piece. You usually throw away this top piece of leek because it's the hardest, but this part in between is pretty and leafy and very edible. I'm making a, as fine a dice as I can. So this is very, very simple. It's just whisking together a few Asian condiments. This is rice wine vinegar three tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. Two teaspoons of mirin. You can get all this stuff in specialty shops or just Asian grocers. And two teaspoons of soy, which I always have on hand because I use it a lot in salad dressings actually. Voila, sauce accompli. Now, the difficult part. Protection. Weapon. Now here are my nice oysters. The trick is, I've learned slowly, that right at the very end, see, there's a little place to get this in and open it up. But you really need to watch it because this can slip. 
So I stick the tip of the knife in here, twist, and then just pry it off. And I always like to cut around because it means it's ready to eat. Instead of a bed of ice, a bed of salt. That way they don't end up swimming if we eat slowly. to do them all yet, but the idea is just to put a little drop in the oyster as much as you like, and that's it. To make something exotic, you don't have to change the recipe, you just have to add a little touch. I've made creme caramel, which I turned into a coconut flan. I used Moroccan flavors to make a great fish plate, halibut in brown butter with cumin carrots, and then chickpeas with green olives and lemon zest. And now, oysters with a leek, soy, and mirin sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Triumph. What do you think? I rearranged all the furniture. I love rearranging the furniture. <laughs> I think it looks great. Oh, my Have gosh. a little bit of Mmm. Knock it with my finger. <laughs>